In this tutorial, I'm going to cover how to jailbreak a PlayStation 3 that's compatible with just a flash drive. I can fully confirm this works. I do own an E3 flasher and a prog sheet for the NAD chips. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is download this program, which is a PS3 console compatibility. This is going to tell you whether or not your console can be jailbroke. There's no going to be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If it says not compatible, you might as well just uh, leave the video. You cannot jailbreak your PlayStations. No questions asked ever. So, um, first thing you're going to do is look on the black back of your PlayStation at the white sticker. Um, it's going to say CECH something. So, if it's a fat model, you just need to worry about the next thing after the last H, which will be A something something. Some of them, you will have one that will be CECHH. -H. So, you're going to click that. You're going to hit start, which, of course, is going to say compatible. Um, what you need to look at is Flash and see if you have a NOR or a NAD chip. This A model has a NAD. If I go to, let's say, a J, it's a NOR. So for fat models, um, you're good to go. Now, if you have a CECH2 or a CECH1, um, you can jailbreak them except for a few models of those. If you pull up your model, which if it's a fat model and it's a CECH1 or 2, you can jailbreak it possibly. If it's a 3 or a 4, you cannot jailbreak it at all. So let's just say you pull up your model, ask for the manufacturer date, um, which you will click here, and you get this. It says maybe compatible. Two different firmwares came on those PlayStations. One is jailbreakable, one is not. You need to get a flash drive, erase everything off of it, open up this folder, put this on your flash drive. So this is what your flash drive should look like. You're going to put that in your PlayStation. You're going to go to System Update and update off the file that shows up from your system storage. Um, a message is going to pop up after a few seconds and tell you what your lowest firmware is. If it says 3.56, you're good to, or lower, you're good to go. If it says 3.60 or higher, you cannot jailbreak your PlayStation. So after you get all that out of the way, you know you can be jailbroke. You're going to put this file on your flash drive. Delete the other one, which is this is the OFW, it's official firmware. If you can't install this because you're higher or um they patch this then you cannot jailbreak your playstation you have to be on this ofw so if you're lower than this um 4.82 you're good to go um if you're higher than 4.82 you can't use this jailbreak method so if you're already jailbroke you shouldn't be watching the tutorial but do not install this because you'll have to finish watching the tutorial in order to re-jailbreak your playstation so um, once you do that, you're going to install that. The next thing you're going to do, which this is the most important step out of the whole tutorial, you're going to get this file, erase everything off your flash drive. This is your flash drive now. You're going to take this file and put it on your flash drive inside of no folders. And then you're going to take this file and put it on your flash drive. This won't be here, of course. Um, I just did this for the tutorial to demonstrate this is what your flash drive will look like. You're going to have the CS, CFW PS3 folder and this on your flash drive. Do not continue the tutorial until you have this on your flash drive. And then after that, you have a choice of the next step. You can either use your phone or use your computer. If you use your phone, you need to go to Google Play. You're going to download a program called KWS. You're going to install it on your phone. You're going to take this folder and put it on your phone's directory. Not your SD card, your phone. And this has to be an, uh, this is for Android devices, of course. It doesn't necessarily have to be a phone. It could be a tablet or any Android device. 
So once you put that on there, you're going to open up the KWS program. It's going to ask you for a directory. You're going to leave the first part of it there. And after the slashes, you're going to put this HTDOCS. And then you're going to hit host or start server, whatever, which is going to do the same thing this program is going to do. If you want to do it off your computer, you're going to just click this program, which everything that um, you got out of the download for this needs to be in its own folder. So once you do that, you're going to go to this website on your PlayStation 3. I'm going to do it off my computer for the demonstration. It's going to take you to this website. So once you're on this website, you should already have checked in this program whether you had a NOR or a NAD chip right here where it's flash at after you put in your model. And it said compatible here. And like I said, if you get this, you did the min verse check and you're on the 3.56. Um, so whether you got NOR or NAD, let's just say you had a NOR, you're going to click on this. I'm on my computer, so this is not going to be enabled, but... Um, if everything's all good, it's going to say congratulations, your PlayStation's on 4.82 firmware, something, something, something. But you will say where it says congratulations. You're going to come here on your PlayStation, you're going to click this. I have had this freeze on me several times. I think I had one PlayStation literally do it to me 13 times. But if you check your PlayStation in this and you are compatible and you did the mint verse check if it applied to you and you were on the 3.56 or lower, then you can do this. It, it crashing and freezing is not going to break your PlayStation. If it does freeze, um, you hit triangle and nothing pops up, hold down your PlayStation button for a second. It should beep once, let go of it, and your PlayStation will shut down on its own. If it takes more than four or five minutes and it don't shut down, if you have the power switch in the back, just shut it off by the power switch. If you don't, just pull out the power cord. Keep redoing it until this says successful and your PlayStation restarts. And like I said, you will not break your PlayStation by doing this. I have done this on probably, I say, 13 PlayStations so far. So, um... After that goes, you're going to go to System Update, and you're going to um, go to your flash drive, and the update, you should have already put it on there, um, and it, it will show up as the 4.82.1, um, which this is a custom firmware built I made myself. Um, once you install it, your PlayStation is going to restart. Um, you can install it from recovery mode as well. Um, so once you do all that, your PlayStation is going to restart. Um, your install package files and everything are not going to be in the cat game category. They're going to be in the custom firmware setting. At the very top of it, you're going to have a thing that says PS3 Homebrew Store, which you have to have active internet, so you're going to want to set your internet up for this. Um, it's going to bring you to here. The first thing I would go do is download Webman. I would get the modification theme. And then you want to go get Multiman, which is right here. So um, I, or I usually get this one. I don't get the edited Multiman. I usually get the, this one. So you're going to download both of those to your flash drive. As soon as you click download, just hit start. Don't go browse for a folder. The PKGs have to be on the root of your memory card. So after you download that, you're going to install Multiman. You're going to install Webman. Um, you also have um, Patch PSN, PSN Ninja, and the Sin Enabler. Um, if you want to go online, I would run this sin enabler, even though you are already on 4.82. If it tells you you don't need to, then it'll tell you don't need to. Um, you also have uh, apps. If you don't want to log into PSN, you just don't care about playing online, here's all your stuff for all the apps where you don't have to be logged into PSN to use. So that's the list of those. 
you got some mod menus and uh, stuff for other games. There's not a whole lot in here, but you see what's in here. And you can get yourself banned going on games modding if you don't know what you're doing. So, not your PlayStation, you'll get account banned. And uh, I do believe most of these are DEX consoles. So if they say DEX, you cannot use them. Until um, another firmware gets released for this 4.82. Um, don't worry about the emulators. I already have something covering that. Um, unless you want Atari and stuff, your custom firmwares, if you want to switch custom firmwares, that's there. You got other apps here which is just, uh, you know, theme stuff, control console, API. Um, the icon that, that's going to take you to this store is already there, so you really don't need to download this unless you plan on switching firmwares and you still want to be able to get to this store. So that's the icon you're going to be seeing that will bring you to this on your actual PlayStation. This is the screen that that icon is going to bring you to. So that covers that. Um, so you ain't got to worry about going to look for Multiman, PSN, Ninja, Patch, PSN, the spoofers or anything. These guys are really good at keeping up to date with this stuff. So um, that's why I added their icon to the firmware. Um, I would still, like I said, go ahead and install their application out of other apps right here. That way you keep it if you install another firmware that's not mine. So after that, um, if you go and look down in the category that's, that says custom firmware, you're going to see something that says all mods emulators downloads. That is my custom emulator builds, um, which already come with pretty much every game that I could possibly find for them. So some of them got 800 games, some of them got 1,000, some of them got close to 2,000 games already built in. But what I would do is go and run Webman after you install it, which I would hold down L, install it once, and then after your PlayStation restarts, just regularly hit X and install it again. It should say uh, Webman Mod Enable when it restarts. You're going to go into assist the settings. Uh, Webman Setup, somewhere in those settings, something says Redirect USB Drive. If, um, which it'll allow you to change everything that you would be getting sent to your USB drive to get downloaded to your PlayStation's hard drive package files. If you're going to download my emulators, make sure you got a flash drive in, but go into Webman and redirect your downloads to your PlayStation. That'll make the downloads of those emulators go way faster because once you start a download, you can't do it in the background. You have to let it run until it finishes. So after you download all my emulators, if you want them all, which is, um, they're, they're a good size. All together, it'd be about six gigs and some change. If you get um, a Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, Sega, and Game Boy. And like I said, I pretty much put every game I could find in them. So um, after you redirect your flash drive downloads to your hard drive you download the emulators you want um go back to that setting and set your flash drive back to normal and then in, to install the emulators you're going to go to um the custom firmware thing install package files and install from the system storage because you redirected it to the system storage if you don't want to redirect it and you download it to your flash drive then it's then install it from your flash drive. If I didn't mention it, there is a built-in custom theme, uh, Dragon Ball Super Tournament of Power theme I made myself. So all you got to do to go is go to themes and apply the Dragon Ball Super theme. Um, and uh, I'm pretty sure you already noticed after you install it um, that you have uh, Dragon Ball Super uh, icons for the different profiles. But other than that, that's it.
Um, I try to pretty much include everything in my build of a firmware you could possibly need. Um, so you don't have to go look for spoofers, PSN Ninja, or pretty much anything. Um, everything's all here. Um, and once uh, Rebug comes out with another firmware, um, then you can come to Custom Firmwares and get Rebug's Rex edition of this firmware. This is what this is now as you notice everything else is Rex which means you can change between DEX and CEX um, which you notice the newest ones not out yet so you can go ahead and download get that you're gonna want to get my emulators before you do that so um, you keep my emulators because once you install this firmware you will lose my all mods emulators downloads tab and and the everything will switch up a little bit so um that's pretty much it um if you have any questions or need any help just uh leave a message in the comments